Hey self lovers, today I wanted to do a personal episode sharing with you my highs and lows and lessons learned in 2023. I went through every month of this year, took inventory and teased out just some like memorable things that happened and also what I took away from them. As you're listening, I invite you to also go through every single month of this year and see what you remember. When I say remember, I mean do this exercise. Um, At least this is the way I did it. You can do it however you want. But first, try to do it without like resorting to your phone or going through your photos or social media posts because I think that what we want to remember and what actually sticks can sometimes be two different things. So it's kind of fun to just go off of memory and rely on a little bit more like semi-conscious recalling just to see what it is from the past year that really stuck out to you. Before I dive into, you know, January, February, all the months of this year, I also want to give you a big, 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 big thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening to this podcast. Um, for, For me and my family and my culture, the new year is actually kind of like a bigger deal than Christmas. We always celebrated like our version of Christmas on the new year. Um, my, my mom and my grandma, we always do like really intense deep cleaning. And now I've taken that into like really intense deep cleaning of my digital spaces, which I did an episode about last week and also like my energetic like aura. And as I reminisce, (laughs) I can't help but feel like this podcast has been such a big part of my growth and that's all thanks to your listenership. I'm not exactly sure all the time like who or how many people are listening, but if you're here right now, I'm just so eternally grateful. And with that being said, I'd also like to announce that for the first time ever, we secured a podcast sponsor for every month of next year. And this is really exciting because we're coming up on the four-year anniversary next week of the Mary's Cup of Tea podcast. And this whole time it's been self-funded and this sponsor like re-signing to be like a consistent support is really helping offset the cost of that. It's not covering the full cost of production, but It is covering about half and that makes it sustainable enough for me to keep doing it and hopefully make these episodes better and better for you. So just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's dive into January. Around this time last year, I was doing an exercise, you know, my my cleansing, my intention setting, and I like to do this in a pretty like low-key way, nothing too much to do with New Year's resolutions, but actually a little bit more reflective and keeping an open mind for the new year. And one big way that I do that is create a word of the year for every year. I set my word of the year for 2023 to be purpose. You might know that I've been struggling with purpose. Um, I think a interesting byproduct of achieving your goals is that you're also kind of left with this sometimes empty feeling of like, what's next? And with that pressure for next to kind of like supersede whatever you just accomplished, right? Like always pushing forward to be more, to do better, to make things greater. And I think this is reflected in just like society and the way they expect things and the way we talk to each other. Like as soon as you get a a partner, they're like, okay, when's the wedding? And then when's the kids? And you have to buy the house. You have to check these boxes. Um, And in the same way, like if you graduate or like got a job or a promotion it's always like okay so what's next like what's your next big goal or um, where do you really see yourself in five ten years and I actually ditched the idea of like five ten year goals years ago I just do not do that anymore I find that it's it's just not healthy for the way my brain operates and then all the goals that I do set like you change so much. I change so much every day. I can't even imagine having the same goals five years from now 
that I do now, <laughs> let alone 10 or 20. And of course, there are certain intentions um, or like, you know, things that you may want that have been consistent throughout your life. But I think more than anything, we crave to feel a certain way. If the way that you get there changes, that that's beautiful, that's great, that's a sign of growth. Throughout your life, you might find that like you're, you're craving similar themes. And I think those, and I call them intentions, I think those are worth leaning into more so than like, I want to make this much money by the time I'm 30 or I want to have these many properties by the time I'm 40 or, you know, those kind of more materialistic goals. So when I set out that goal of purpose and for lack of better words, finding my purpose, this was the vocabulary that I had back then. Although if you've followed the journey on this podcast and all the times that we've talked about like feeling lost and finding your purpose, you know that we are now saying things more like micro purposes because it's very unlikely that you just have one big purpose that is you know, steady your entire life. And it might be more true that you have like a lot of different interests and and things that you're passionate about. Um, And those, I call them micro purposes. A few episodes back, we also talked to Dr. Sarah Kubrick, who wrote a whole book about this idea of self-loss. And she also, um, my biggest takeaway from that episode, I'll link it in the description. She talked about how you can't find yourself. You must create yourself. And I really, really, really like that. Just like a small shift in language. Anywho, when I chose my word of the year and I made it purpose, this was also around the same time that I released my new self-love journal, 100 Days of Self-Love, and I committed to doing every single prompt in that journal and documenting it on social media and just really being consistent with journaling. And it was kind of weird to be like reading my own words and using my own prompts. With that, like daily journaling, even though it's just five minutes a day, I got this sense that I wasn't like too thrilled about in the moment, but now I'm realizing that it was absolutely necessary. I I realized that growing, and right now I'm calling it growing kind of like instead of healing, because I don't feel like I'm like healed past tense, but I feel like the word growing or like evolving is just more fitting for this time of my life. So if whether that's healing or growing, wherever you are in your journey, as you're going or growing through that, it is so much messier (laughs) than you might like, than you might think, than it might seem like on social media. I think that growth is more like mundane and like just so raw and real and sometimes boring and just sometimes you want to like bang your head against the wall and quit everything and you might have like one day out of 50 where you're like, wow, this is like the sexy growth that I see on social media and I'm really feeling good about myself. But most of the other days are just probably going to be like you in your pajamas or your home clothes, like all by yourself. Your room is probably going to be like a little cluttered and your mind is also probably going to be all over the place getting through that hump and then putting pen to paper regardless of how you feel about that experience or the appearance of that experience, even in just five minutes of journaling. And I think the same applies to like meditation, mindfulness, uh, even like things like being without your phone or going on a, a walk or a hike. Once you get past that hump of like, I don't want to, this is like so not glorious. Then there, there's just like, shifts like that's when shift happens (laughs) I just went through like those phases of like just how annoying it can be to journal sometimes and that resistance and those blocks and then the feelings of like oh and heavy and just like whatever about it and then there are feelings of like pure presence and like genuine joy and inner peace and acceptance and maybe some like enlightenment and things that just like open up but you can't really have one without the other. So to summarize, I learned in January that healing, growth, it's messy. There's 
beauty in that mess that that's like why it's healing that's why it's growth it's not healing and growth despite the mess it's because of the mess that healing and growth and shift happens going into february this is my birthday month and it always ends up being like a pretty packed month for me because it's it's relatively short it's my birthday there's lots of stuff going on also in arizona where i live and this was the month that i had my bachelorette i really leaned into the importance of female friendships i truly believe that we teach what we most have to learn so even though i talk a lot about friendship and connection and and true deep sisterhood and i adore my sister and i of course i love love all of my friends sometimes it's it's hard to like practice that and to actually bring people together and it, when it came to like wedding planning when i was in the midst of that it was so tempting to just kind of throw your hands up in the air and be like i'm too tired i don't want to plan anything else you know i had thoughts like who would even come to a bachelorette like none of my friends know each other they're from all over the u.s because of those like little mental blocks i almost didn't have this bachelorette and then I got this advice from a friend which I want to pass on to you. I don't remember how she said it. It was way more eloquent than this but what I got away from it was three, three and a half words. Don't skip steps. Don't skip steps. Again, I know that sometimes you might want to omit some kind of milestone celebration or gathering or act like it's like no big deal and you're too busy with other things and maybe you genuinely do want to take that time instead to rest and be with yourself. I felt like this at first too, but I am so glad that this one friend really pushed me gently and that all it took was like a couple text exchanges. She just like pushed me to let myself be celebrated and like let myself be in that bride mode as cheesy as it was and and get my girls together knowing that like whoever wants to be there will make it happen and that people can put their differences aside to all hang out with each other or get to know each other fresh and actually two of my friends ended up becoming best friends and then went on like two three other trips together this year alone they're like two peas in a pod and i'm obsessed with that bestie matchmaking <laughs> that happened through my bachelorette after having that experience with my girls i know that's something that i'm gonna practice through every like milestone or big kind of like phase in my life right like there's a reason why people do and celebrate and mark certain events in the form of a gathering, in the form of a ceremony. This year, we also had Priya Parker on the show, and she wrote this amazing book called The Art of Gathering. And I first picked it up to be like a better retreat host and leader, but then I ended up using it for just like little dinner parties at my house or like getting together with family or something like a bachelorette, my wedding planning. So we did this whole episode kind of centered around wedding planning and the importance of, of community. Even if there's conflict within that community, it still might behoove us to lean into gathering more often. And I think after the pandemic, a lot of people are on board with this idea. But in case you find yourself like a little bit more hesitant or introverted in that way, don't skip steps. <laughs> Celebrate your accomplishments. Get people together. Um, money can be made back, but memories, experiences, this time in your life will, will never be this time in your life ever again. So I'm really glad that I had the bachelorette and, and our wedding. And I think moving forward, like, is a baby shower really cheesy? Yeah, but guess what? I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it because I believe in the power of people gathering centered around some kind of purpose, some kind of shared communal, um, idea or reason for being there this could be anything this could be like like I mentioned an event milestone accomplishment in your life or it could be just let's get together and play Scrabble don't skip steps in March March it was the month that I got married 32323 is our anniversary date yes because I am a basic bitch and I love numbers like that and it's cool to remember and fun to tell our kids in the future in that month I got married there's so much I can say but I feel like I've already 
talked exhaustively about our wedding and we have a a whole podcast episode of me and husband sitting down reflecting on it. It's the most listened to episode for a reason because it's just so sweet and wholesome. I'll link that wedding reflections episode in the description as well in case you want to listen to that. But I will also add this big takeaway. People will surprise you. People that you never thought would show up to your wedding because they've been estranged from the family for so long or you've been estranged from their family for so long and then next thing you know they're there and they're giving this beautiful wedding speech and dancing with you and certain other family members you thought would never ever be in the same room together let alone talk let alone hug and then we have a photo of that hug did they repair their relationship no but they set their differences aside for one day and then there's those who you think are really going to show up for you and then they kind of let you down. So there are some people that will disappoint you. They'll surprise you in kind of an unpleasant way. And then there's going to be other people that, again, like you never ever thought that they would show up for you in such a big way. And it's pleasantly surprising. So people will surprise you is is something that can be taken either direction but I think overall it helps us lean into a little bit more compassion for individual people like knowing that everybody's dealing with their own shit they're all probably doing the best they can I know it might not be good enough for you in this moment and obviously the feelings of resentment and anger and rage sometimes need to be worked through as well Um, but there's going to be other people that will surprise you in a way that is also healing and almost like the antidote to those who let you down. In April, this is going into some family stuff that I can't share publicly out of privacy and respect, of course, but it was an experience. It was me and my husband's like first big marital family struggle. Let's just say that I spent some time in psychiatric hospitals, not checked in, but like in the lobby of one. And through this mental health crisis, I learned that sometimes the biggest difference, not sometimes, I would almost say like 99% of the time, the biggest difference between someone who's struggling and is able to like get through that struggle and cope and manage and actually live like a really fulfilling life. I'm sure we've all struggled ourselves at some point. The only difference between those who who get through it and those who suffer tremendously and perhaps a lot more than they would have is luck. Like it, so much of it is luck. Like the family that you were born into, the, your socioeconomic status, like what resources you have at your disposal, how things just kind of unfolded and panned out in such a way that one person has somebody to to vouch for them and to help them and to, you know, support them when they're low. And then another person like literally has fucking nobody. And that's just devastating to see. Um, I had a pretty mind-altering experience and it was simply overhearing a conversation of a woman who who came in because her brother was like, I think, going to harm himself or others. And basically, that she was told that there's nothing that they could do even because he was totally alone. He was totally estranged. She had no access, no key to his apartment, no way to get him out of that situation. She was his only kin. And whatever happens to her brother is just like kind of up to fate or luck, the universe, God, whatever you believe in. And that's just such a devastating place to be. So aside from like family and friends and and support in general being so important, I also like got home that night and I was like, I am so lucky. I am just so lucky. And I I listen to, I listen to a lot of podcasts, you know, I love the personal growth world. The people that I see as most successful 
will almost always admit that luck played a huge role in that success. And again, success doesn't just have to be money or fame, but success as in like, I feel safe in my home most of the time and I have basic needs met. Like that's already success, you know? And just having that is just, it just makes me feel so lucky. Um, So yeah, it was it was humbling and hard and I'm, I'm grateful that we got through it as a family, but also cognizant that a lot of people don't necessarily make it to the other side, um, because they might not be so lucky. Sorry, that was heavy and dark, but it was big for me. Okay. In May, you know, May I spent just kind of going through the motions. I was still feeling pretty lost in life, pondering what to do next. I found myself at the bank with my husband because we had just gotten married a couple months ago and we decided to open up a joint bank account. And I told you this story when I was sharing with you how the idea of tea came into fruition. Um, But in case you haven't heard that, the short version is I was sitting at the bank and the banker was like, what do you do? I'm like, I have this company, Mary's Cup of Tea. He's like, do you sell tea? And I'm like, no, but maybe I should. And that's literally how I ended up revisiting this idea of Mary's Cup of Tea after seven years, like initially wanting to do tea and then kind of giving that up and now coming back to it seven years later. And if you're a numbers girly like me, you know that seven is is a big number. Like your brain changes every seven years. All, all of your cells are different every seven years. Um, Saturn return is kind of going to start to happen for me probably next year at some point when you turn 27. Saturn makes a full loop around the sun and a lot of people in their later 20s tend to experience dramatic shifts in their lives. So the fact that the idea of tea just got, you know, I can't even say thrown at me because it was kind of just like a little inkling and at the randomest moment and in the randomest place. And I was like, wait, maybe, maybe I should try this again. Um, And I did, we'll get to that later. Um, But in May, to put it succinctly, I learned that creativity cannot be rushed. Creativity. Mm. <laughs> Don't you just love like a good wordplay? In July, or wait, June. How can we skip June? It's my sister's birthday. She turned 15 in June and we went on a trip to see my best friend in the Midwest. My sister goes to this like amazing summer camp up there. And every year we take this trip. I stay with my best friend. Alana joins us. We drop her off at camp. It's like this beautiful experience full of the best sisterhood vibes. And, um, as I was like taking her up there to camp, you know, I get a lot of emotions cause she's gone for a month and celebrating her birthday is like a big deal for me because I just still can't believe sometimes that I have a sister especially such an amazing and bright and funny and creative and cool one at that so um as I'm like going through all these waves of emotions with like my baby sisters growing up I also throughout the summer like starting June and Once she got back from camp and started the new school year, we also went through some like difficult phases this year, my sister and I. Um, You know, we had some like difficult conversations, some that even turned into fights. We drifted apart, you know, went a couple weeks without talking, which is so unusual for us. And I, you know, would go from like the big sister, like bitterness to just always wanting to like welcome her with open arms and like please come back to me can we please be close again the simple lesson there is just that every relationship goes through its phases friendships lovers family sisters and those phases like need to be respected in some way like you kind of you have to give somebody space sometimes you have to hold them up when they're down you might have to like push them sometimes and motivate them other times you might need to like take a step back and just like let them do their thing and being able to grow with my sister in that way has been although unsettling at times like when we're not as close it also makes the moments that we like reunite like the past two three months have been 
so yummy hanging out with my little sister we've just had like the best times we're back to having like sleepovers on the weekends and making funny videos and all these inside jokes and she actually just called me right before I started recording this podcast episode she's like are you busy I need to vent and I'm just like so honored that I'm the person she calls but that doesn't mean I'm always the person she calls you know so I think it's it's okay for relationships to ebb and flow and for dynamics to shift and change especially the ones that are longer term. In July um, my mom and I went to Portugal accompanied by her best friend. I don't know if you've been on this side of TikTok recently but on my feed at least I see this kind of like big movement and shift toward acknowledging that our mothers as difficult as those relationships can be sometimes that they're also like little girls too right like your mom was somebody like she's also like human right and figuring shit out and she was probably like so scared to become a parent and so terrified to give birth and like going through all like similar I think there's like universal womanhood connected experiences that a lot of us go through but we forget that like our moms are kind of people too um, and I think this applies to both of our parents but at least on on my side of TikTok I've just been reading these beautiful poems about how like your mom had to give up some of her hopes and dreams and she also you know broke hearts and made mistakes and like maybe isn't just the role of your mom like maybe there's there's this whole other side of her personality that you've never even seen or like allowed yourself to see because us daughters we're kind of like caught up in our own shit and that's partially the beauty of motherhood that you're there for your child to like bloom and develop and sadly we don't get to know our mothers and like all of their multifacetedness so you know I in in this trip to Portugal with my mom and you know it just kind of hit my mom and I that when are we ever going to take an international trip together again like especially if I'm thinking about having kids it might not be as easy of a possibility um and so we we rallied we enrolled her best friend also into coming with us because we the three of us traveled to bali together many years ago and we just wanted to like recreate that little trio that we had and it was so fun it was also so cool to see like my mom with her bestie (laughs) like my mom has a best friend did you know that i don't know i found that so fascinating like i knew she had friends but i've never like spent intimate time with her and her bestie and saw how she is around other people that are like not necessarily me or other family members our moms have friends they have their own secret fuck-ups that they never told you about they had this whole life before you before they shifted into the role of being your caretaker and getting to know your parents as an adult is such a privilege in some ways you're also getting to know who they were before they had you right because their primary like responsibility now that you're older is not just like taking care of you so maybe they're finding like bits and pieces of themselves that they had lost or they're just turning into this person that you don't recognize that doesn't come without its own challenges my mother and I have had our our fights and and I know that not everybody gets to like have a mom who's alive and well or um, be close enough to her to fight but when it comes to these generational curses like she might not have broken all of them there might be stuff that I still am like so angry that she had to pass on to me but she probably broke a lot more of them than I even know, that I even know to think about. In this trip to Portugal, it was just such an honor to see my mom like free to be herself. I felt so lucky to be able to do this trip with her. Going into August, um, this is when we had our safari honeymoon when we went to Tanzania and did a whole wildlife safari experience and then I went to Dar es Salaam, the capital, and I got to visit the tea facility where I was sourcing tea from, got to meet the whole team, and then I decided to like make this whole tea thing a reality and that was right in the middle of like right after our safari honeymoon, or sorry, right after our safari 
then we popped on over to Dar es Salaam and then we went over to the island of Zanzibar, which was like the most amazing vacation I've ever had in my life. I mean, this whole honeymoon was a trip of a lifetime and we recap all of that in episode 176 those are that's one of two episodes where husband and I sit down one was our wedding and the other one was our honeymoon because those were just two big highlights that we wanted to remember forever and ever and share with you especially if you're thinking about doing a trip like that at some point again just like our wedding I could share so much about that but I just want to leave it at pure gratitude like I just feel pure 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 gratitude being out in the wild and like seeing animals exist and there's something different about an African sky (laughs) for some reason like people people have talked about it and I read about it before I went on this trip but it, it was just different experiencing it it's like almost endless like you look up at the sky and the stars and they're just so like vast there maybe it's because like Tanzania is near the equator so maybe this doesn't apply to Africa as a whole but anyway it just felt so unique so special I was so grateful for all of it even the times when we got sick and we're shitting ourselves and you know the all those bumpy rides that we had to go through the whole thing was just extraordinary I can't recommend it enough and I was just present and and grateful for every every single moment going into September this is when I officially decided to do another retreat. I came back from the honeymoon and I just felt re-energized and I also was thinking about this one beautiful place that my mom and I saw while we were in Portugal and I just couldn't not do a retreat there and of course I was like scared and nervous and all the emotions that I feel like go on this roller coaster when it comes to planning retreats because it's such like a not only is it a big event but it's a really vulnerable experience that demands a lot of my emotional energy and attention and I, I love doing it but I can't like do more than one or two a year so it makes them that much more exciting when I do do them and back in September when I you know, when I officially decided and I put it out there, I'm nervous for every retreat. And I always think like, nobody's going to sign up. Nobody's going to come. Um, I had some hesitations. Like, I'm like, do people want to go to Portugal? Is it weird that it's going to be winter? Like the retreat would be in January, all these like little thoughts I had. And then it sold out like the fastest that I've ever seen a retreat fill up. So I, I wrote in my journal, you know, when you When you lead from the heart, people will come. And that was my whole intention, not just for the retreat, but also like really working on my relationship with social media and making the content that I post a little bit more like the Mary who started her social media, not the Mary who like turned into this this influencer. Like I really wanted to go back to those heartfelt posts and um, hopefully I was able to do some more of that but I just keep reminding myself like when you lead from the heart like the right people will come they'll 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 be there um and it'll be the most connecting and joyful experience and I can't wait for it to happen in January October was a hard month um I think we all know that there was a big world event that happened for me not only was this deeply personal two places that I'm deeply connected to are struggling and you know Ukraine and Israel and Palestine and just having like a lot of identity ties to to those places not only was it devastating for me personally and my husband's family who was you know hiding in the bunkers and till this day obviously it's not over till this day we're still checking in and making sure they're okay and sadly a lot of people are not okay Um, but I think it's just been really disheartening to see how the internet has been pulling people in so many different directions and, and using picking and choosing their moral stances based on what's going to benefit them the most maybe there's some people in your own life that have like disappointed you maybe I'm one of those people I don't know Um, because I always get that like you spoke too much or you didn't speak enough and it's really hard to find your place I keep coming back to that like if you can't find your place like maybe it's not your fucking place but anyway (laughs) I I I had and I'm having a hard time with that um 
I decided, I was like, you know what? Before I start shouting into the abyss, I'm going to read a book that has been on my nightstand on my TBR list for quite some time. And that book is called Nonviolent Communication. I also did a whole podcast episode about it, like a little mini book review and, you know, sharing with you my biggest takeaways from it. And I just love the lessons in that book about empathy and compassion and how to not just talk to people, but listen to people. I felt this was its own type of solution. Obviously, it's not the solution to world peace, but I had this sense that if we could all just take a moment to breathe and practice with ourselves instead of fighting with each other in the comments, in the comment section of Instagram and TikToks, then maybe we wouldn't be in this pickle in the first place. And obviously, like a lot of it is out of our control and not our fault, but our couples therapist shared this, he called it an Irish proverb. I tried to look it up, could not find the exact quote. So I feel like he made this up and then attributed it to an Irish proverb just so it sounds more legitimate. But nevertheless, it is useful way to think about life. Our, our couples therapist was kind of like guiding us toward how to have a healthy amount of conflict. And he said, wars start because of people's inability to work through conflict. So it's not, conflict is not the cause of a war. Conflict is actually what prevents a war. And that was really interesting to me how it applied to like our marriage and also how it applied to like what's going on globally. I know that some people might say like it's it's a cop-out to be like, this is a long-standing conflict. And it is, and there's people that have been benef benefiting from it being such a long conflict. There's people on, I'm not even going to say both sides, I'm going to say all sides, because there's so many sides. It's not just the two that the narrative is presenting to you, because they always divide and conquer into us versus them. But they forget that they themselves are also a part of it. So it's not us and them, it's us and them and you and me. It's all of us. And I think that, you know, just really highlighted how other other countries and governments, people in power are using this all to their own advantage. And it's, yeah, it was hard. It was devastating. It still is. My biggest takeaway or lesson learned is this quote by Bertrand Russell. I had to look up who that was. I'm sorry. I don't know. He's like a British philosopher, mathematician in the late 1800s slash first half of the 1900s. I don't know too much about his beliefs or views or work, so please don't come at me if he's, well, I did check that he wasn't like a terrible person, but he did say this one thing that felt pretty wise. He said, the whole problem with the world is that fools and fanatics are so certain of themselves, but wiser people are so full of doubts. And I thought that was just like, wow. <laughs> By the way, this quote gets misattributed to Charles Bukowski. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, in case you don't know, Bukowski is this like romanticized misogynist who wrote a couple of cool poems, but a lot of his work is a little bit problematic. Anyway, Bertrand Russell is the person I'm choosing to quote here. And I'm going to leave it at that because now I feel like I'm, I'm saying too much. November was also hard because not only we were still or we are still in the midst of this terrible war in the Middle East. <sighs> My husband also got into a car accident. He got hit by a drunk driver. That happened while I was away. I was in New York with my girlfriends. It was such a beautiful trip aside from receiving that news. My kind of like lesson from this is about living in hypotheticals and how useless and counterproductive that is. These hypotheticals of like, what if right? What if this happened? What if that happened? It's such a anxiety provoking way to think. And it was so tempting for me. And I did fall into quite a few spirals of like thinking about like, what if it was worse? Or what if my husband was taken from me? And also the flip side, like, why didn't I just fucking stay home? Like, why did I go on this trip? And there's a, a couple other things that happened this year that I can't talk about publicly, but it, it sent me into these like dark places of like, self-blame hypotheticals like on the surface they seem like harmless but when we go into them 
they're pretty self-destructive. You, you can do all these, you can live in the hypotheticals, but really all you have is now. So when you're playing these what-if games with yourself and when you're blaming yourself for the result being different than what it is now, not only are you like wasting precious mental real estate, but you're also not letting yourself be in the present moment as my husband um, continues on his like full recovery journey. There's a lot of things we've had to give up that we loved like pickleball and hiking, but luckily slowly, but surely and through uh, physical therapy, he is getting back into it. He is okay. Um, things are more or less normal, but I just feel so bad that like physically he's still in so much pain, but hopefully time, time will heal his body. And I just hope that, you know, this is like a big wake up call and a reminder to us to not only <laughs> drive safely, defensively, not be on our phones, but also be so, so grateful for every moment spent together. Okay, December. That's where we are now. I'm recording this on December 21st, so I still have 10 days to live December. But here's what I have for you for now. This month was when, was when I launched my tea, and I, I see so many more possibilities after doing this. My goal with the self-love tea and um, creating hibiscus heart, which was my first tea blend, I truly just wanted to like try this little venture, see how it goes. I had no idea that so many people would buy it. I literally don't even have tea left for myself. So thank you. If you're one of those people that bought it, you've robbed me of my own tea. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just so like, I'm so ecstatic. And it was like this high for a whole week of um, this tea launch. I, I just didn't know that so many people were interested in drinking what I created. And it was so different than like what my usual brand is, which is like, you know, books and podcasts and retreats that really depend on like me, Mary, mentally, like being mentally stimulating. Tea is like a little product, like it's, it's a little piece of me, but it's also kind of outside of me enough that I can be like, that I can have this like healthy detachment. It's funny because I started off this year with my word of my focus intention being on purpose. And now after... 12 months of thinking about my purpose, I finally feel like I can let go of that idea of finding one big purpose and instead just being like so content with all the different possibilities. I want to leave you with this little lesson learned and that is that there are many possibilities but your capacity is finite. So there's endless things that you can be doing. There are probably a lot of things that you want to do, but the capacity for you to do those things is quite limited. And I don't say that to limit you, but rather to liberate you from the pressure to have it all figured out, to have it all done, to chase your goals and dreams and everything because life is short and life is short. Like I mentioned in November, I, I really learned that with something t bad that happened, right? Like life is short and we should seize every moment, but that doesn't necessarily have to mean hustle and grind and trying to maximize everything. In fact, for a lot of us, maybe it means slowing down because we find ourselves multitasking so much, switching between all the different apps, trying to get everything done Monday through Friday with work and clean the house and keep up. And sadly, this is probably in some ways like a a fact of modern life, but maybe there are other ways that we can resist this notion that everything needs to get done right away. Take your time, so many possibilities, but your capacity is finite and maybe that is just a call to lean into the present moment. I love you so much. I hope you have a happy new year. I hope you start it with some fresh perspectives and an open mind. Um, a new word of the year if you do that. And as always, please let me know if you like this podcast episode by leaving a comment underneath this video or even better, if you want to support me, you can leave a rating on Spotify or a review on Apple. Either way, I love hearing from you. I will take anything just to know that you're on the other side listening to this maybe hopefully appreciating it. And it's just always nice to have this conversation be two-sided instead of one-sided. And I will talk to you next year in 2024.